supposed to be like a Hawaiian outing. Everything gonna have something sweet to it, I guess. Uh, pineapple, and I'm the celebrity chef. Looks like he's making some shrimp, some chicken, some kebabs. Uh, he's got some homebrew stuff there that I've never seen before, and I, I'm waiting for him to open up the whole kitchen sink to feed all of us today. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna cook, conversate, talk sports, hang out with the kids, answer questions, maybe watch a little college football. Today's day was a surprise. I didn't know what I was cooking until I got here, but it's all the same when you know what you're doing to me. Cooking is easy. It's like driving a car. You don't know how to work all the knobs. It takes a little time, but when the kitchen, it's a, to me, it's a different feeling. Once they told me what the idea of what they wanted to do, still ain't so many ways to cook the food, either on the oven, on, on the grill, or uh, in the oven. And so if I can't do them three things, ain't no something trying to be a cook. So. I'm real good in what I do, and I can freelance, so they ain't, they ain't throw no snake on the table yet, or no possum, but I have cooked alligator before, so I'm good. I wouldn't sign up for it if I couldn't do it. Um, I like the challenge. I mean, it's just, you know, showing a different side of me, different skill, and uh, I'm glad I got into cooking. And I can make people happy and give kids hope in life like this. You never know who you can help with some things you do. So I'm helping someone to be better. I do camps and inner city stuff too in Cleveland, stuff here in New York. Um, so it's just good for everybody who pitching in and giving a hand and giving back. We're doing all this for a worthy, worthy cause. Some wonderful organizations that have uh, affiliated with uh, Charles Oakley, such as the John Starks Foundation and Steve's Camp. And Oak is a master in the kitchen, and he's doing a great job cooking everything up, and I can't wait to eat it. The Steve Camp is a great camp for uh, disadvantaged children who go upstate, and they learn about healthy eating and, and citizenship and things like that. And uh, this is all of a wonderful way to raise money for the Steve's Camp, and they're an in integral part of what we're doing here today. My name is Steve Kess. I'm the founder of Steve's Camp at Horizon Farm. I'm a kid from the streets of the Bronx. My dad was a taxi cab driver. I went to Dartmouth on a full scholarship, we had no money, and it changed my life. So streets of the Bronx, Hanover, New Hampshire, Dartmouth, I always wanted to help kids and change their lives, and that's what we're doing. The camp runs, you know, it's all on money, you know, on uh, donations. It's a total not-for-profit camp, and uh, we're changing lives. Seven years, a thousand kids already, and it's making a really big difference for everyone. Charles is unbelievable. He actually allowed uh, us to have three different events at one event and we raised $21,000 because of this. And Charles always gives of himself to help in charity situations. John Sox Foundation, I'm on the board. Giving back to the inner city kids scholarships. A lot of kids don't get a chance to go to college, but we pick a kid every year and get a chance, so it's, that's the most important thing. This is one of the auctions we do at this tournament every year. And we finally have, we have lovely people who buy gifts to help kids go to college and it's a great cause. I think that John came up with the idea when he had come up and couldn't go to the school. He had to go to a local school, then they go to junior college, then he got a scholarship. So just giving back to the kids in a positive way. I think, you know, when guys go home and cook a nice dinner for their wife, that really make the home more happier because because the, uh, the wives and do girlfriends, always think they do all the work. The washing, the cleaning, the taking care of the kids. So when you can surprise them with a meal, they can sit back and have a glass of wine. Like, wow, you got these skills, huh? I didn't cook when I was in college because I didn't have an oven or a kitchen. So basically, I eat all fast food, I eat a cafeteria food. I started when I got, to, when I got drafted to Chicago, that's when I first started. But once I got into the league, I started selling in and you home more, watching TV, so I just took them up to learn how to cook. And um, like I said, I'm not bad in the kitchen. On the road, you can get the team together, you know, do this, have dinners, uh, get, get somewhere, have a kitchen, just make some dishes, sit around, watch the games, so. Try to bring the team together, get to know one another off the court. And I think that uh, when I was in New York, we did that. Couldn't, we didn't do a lot of New York like I did in Chicago and Toronto, because New York, 
Everybody was so spread out, but I did it a few times. Just start cooking and one thing led to another one. And the word get around, okay. He cooked pretty good, so I guess once you start cooking good, everybody wanna get something to cooking. We preparing chicken, we having pineapple, red pepper, yellow pepper, green pepper, and red onions. We gonna make them different flavors. So now right now we got three yellow, I mean three orange and one green. So we gonna make more flavor on the stick. And we're gonna probably put a sauce on it. Uh, this is my house. Uh, happy to be here today with Mr. Charles Oakley. Uh, me and several of our friends uh, have been supporters of uh, Steve's Camp. It's a great organization that takes care of inner city kids, gives them an opportunity to get out of the city in the summer and really do wonderful thing, things, learn a lot of life skills. And uh, every year we go and there's an auction, and, and every year by far the most uh, interesting item on the auction list is uh, you get to have Charles come to your kitchen and cook for you and your friends. So we did it last year, we had a fantastic time, and uh, we're doing it again this year. So last year, I think we kept it pretty simple. It was, uh, Charles made one of the greatest chicken dishes I've ever had. I've tried to reproduce it on several occasions, and I can honestly say I was not able to do it. Uh, this year, uh, my family and I we went to Hawaii in August. Uh, so, the, so the women had a great idea that maybe we should do a Hawaiian theme. So uh, I think we got a, a range of different uh, delicacies here uh, straight from Hawaii. And the great thing about Charles is he does, has no idea what he's going to be cooking. He just shows up, takes a look at the menu, adds his, his touch, and uh, goes from there. So I'm sure we'll have a little bit of a, a, a spin to the menu, but uh, we're all excited. Brown sugar, soy sauce, two, uh, half a cup of... Pineapple, you got some pineapple juice? I need um I need two two garlic cold mint. What garlic is that? Debbie? Yeah. I need two of them chopped up. Just two? Yep. Thank you. I'll probably need a little more if you can. Sure. Thanks. That's a half a cup. Some pineapple juice. We got um, two cups of pineapple. It's small. We got um, brown sugar. We got soy sauce. We got two cups, um, two garlic mash, red pepper, green pepper, soy sauce, salt and pepper, teaspoon each one. I'm gonna mix it up and call it a day. I'll let, let the juice get in it. They marinated for 30, 40 minutes. Now we putting it on the grill. Let it cook for about three, four minutes. Turn it over. Grill's a good grill, though. This is gonna be the coconut battle shrimp. Coconut battle shrimp, so I gotta make a base for the, for the coconut, and, and I'm gonna fry them. So I gotta do like 60 shrimps, so I gotta make a base enough for 60. I'm gonna dip them and fry them. So the coconut, this is gonna be coconut fried shrimps. So this is the coconut, that's the breadcrumbs. I put two eggs in it. Salt and pepper, that's it. Small eggs, so I might need three. So I'm gonna throw all of them in a minute. The coconut shrimps. Then I'm gonna fry them in olive oil. Well, olive oil, you know, get hot quick, so you gotta get it low. You don't wanna burn the grease. It's almost like frying the fish. You want the, the grease to be over the while it's fried. Turn it down low and let it get hot. Take about two minutes. So all the flavor is based into the salt and pepper, the lime peel. Um, so olive oil sometimes take longer to cook. In re regular oil. It's heavy. How has your mother influenced your cooking? She's the best cook in the world. If I have a question, I'll definitely have to ask her, my sister, or one of my aunts. But I don't have too many questions. Though. And like being on, you know, I say you get one call in jail. I just say that call from, you know, I, in food, I find my way out of it. Last Sunday, I was in Cleveland. She made um, cabbage, 
baked chicken, yams, macaroni and cheese, cornbread. She can do that with her eyes closed. Just know, when you start cooking that many years, 40, 30, 40 years, she got the best restaurant in the world. But she love my cooking. I'm one who got her to stop using a lot of different things in the kitchen. Like a lot of butter, use olive oil, uh, do this. I can cook collard green, you know, stuff without meat in it. But I can do it both ways. But she just didn't know how to cook. When you put your coals in, if on gas, you just turn it down. When you're doing with coals, I level my coals are real low. So flare up, don't hit the steaks too much with the heat because it, it damage the steak. Stir, stir steaks. They real light, tender. These, you want these to be crispy. They so tender, so small. You know, they don't take long to cook. About two or three minutes each side. See, a lot of time when you're cooking, when you see stuff starting to tighten up and sweat, it's cooking good. Anytime you cook something sweet on the grill, it tend to make the heat and burn, you know, it burn more, because it got that texture in it. It's almost like pork chop. You can't, you can't run this. You can't, you know, you can't burn this up. It tastes good burned up or cooked up. Some meat that, you know, just got that meat. Just some good meat. I like mine well, well done, point blank. Oak in the kitchen. It's time to eat. Let's go. The artist, a, a musician, I think it's different than like basketball, football. It's just take a lot of self pride, you know, when you do this. And like playing golf, tennis, boxing, individual sports is more harder than team sports because you got to make all the moves at all times. In football, you can miss a tackle, somebody else can tackle. Basketball, you can miss a shot, somebody else get the rebound, put it back in, so. And if you're putting that food on the table, ain't no missing. You got to be right. Oh, you're good man. Thank you. I was busy with everybody, and I couldn't get around to eat, so when I finally got to the food, there was literally, and I'm not exaggerating, there's this much left in a tray because everyone took doubles and triples. That's how good the, the food was. Charles Oakley is a champion. He's one of the greatest Knicks of all time, and he's beloved in this city. Absolutely beloved, and, and we're, it's an honor to have him here today. It's a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, I will see you later. All right, thank you. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful night. When I started cooking, I started real basic. I didn't start with, like, making dressing. Some food you just got to be real patient with and real make sure you know how to make it. Like when you're doing tater salad, dressing, macaroni and cheese, some things you just gotta be right. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I can make this, I can make that, but in some dishes you when you're cooking for other people, it just have to be right. And you know, sometimes you can't cross that line if you, if you can't get it right. I'll tell them go catch the snake, then come back. <laughs> and when, when they catch it, then I'll just cook it. Good? A wrap? Wrap. <laughs> Good job.